boost up two today, and that will be our land area and our sky, the clouds, setting up so that we can get a depth of fill of our image. And we're going to start off with our fan brush. I have two separate fan brushes that I like to use mainly. Um, obviously, one's smaller for more detail, larger for more surface area. Clouds are typically white. Clouds have many different variations and colors that highlight them. Right now, let's start off with our titanium white. Just, I wet my brush so that I can get a good amount of paint on it without wasting my oil. Clouds have no form. You can do clouds however, the, however you want to. It's best to use the edge and reduce the cloud on both sides of the paint. So as you can see, my paintbrush is completely covered with paint. You want a good thick amount of, of, of oil on your brush. And you never want to stop at the edge of your painting. Your painting doesn't stop with the edge. Art has no limit. getting a good amount of paint on there. And as you can see, my clouds are clear and numerous. But that's exactly what I want. So, you want to keep your stroke light and airy so that you can have different progression of light and darkness of your, your sky. So as you can see, there are some areas of my clouds that have more paint than others. And that's a good thing. Another thing you have to realize about painting is that you will be cleaning your brush quite often. Um, you do not want to actually mix colors all the time. So it is a necessary aspect of painting is to clean your brush almost after every time you apply paint. Using my second fan brush, I will use it to blend my whites in, but I'm not going to completely cover up everything. It's just like I said, I, I, I want some areas to have more uh, depth than others, and that's where the darker areas of light will be shining through. I'll be using my fan brush quite a bit. You do not want to completely saturate your sky with your clouds. You do want some of the blue to shine through, even though I am going for a majority cloudy sky. Now I want to add the highlights to those clouds. So I will take my alizarin crimson. I don't want to mix my white together with my, my other colors, so I'll take a little bit with my palette knife, but this helps with uh, just placing paint in other areas. And we're going to do the same thing with the Alizarin Crimson. I am mixing it with the white to dilute it, make it more of a pinkish color. But filling up my smaller fan brush and we're going to go with the highlights. Um, and again, you don't want to oversaturate your whole painting. But you do want to indicate that there is a highlight. reds will get darker as you get closer to the horizon. Everything takes time. Everything takes time. Taking my other fan brush and blending. You don't want to use a great deal of pressure, but you do want to press hard enough so that you do um, blend in the color but pressing too hard will make the whole thing blend too much 
and you won't get the feel that you're looking for. Now we're going to add the low lights and I will take my ultramarine and my alizarin crimson mixing them together. Now for touch-ups of your of your your clouds, you go back to the white. And I'm not trying to get everything, so I'm only using the edge of my fan brush so that I can get a, a, an even amount of color. But you want to use a lot of paint. And you're not blending it in. You're more like dabbing and smearing just a bit. Because this will add in another layer of highlight. Like that clouds are pretty much done and lightly blending what you need to understand is that your clouds don't have to look exactly like mine that's not necessary you can have your clouds look any way you want them to just as long as you get you get the the feel for what we're trying to portray. Now we'll use our round tip, a uh, half inch brush, good. And this is our permanent green light. And we're going to add in a land for our landscape. So taking that permanent green, make our landscape. No scene actually stops at the edge of your, your, your picture. You do not want it to feel as if it stops at the end of your painting. That's not good. So you can see my clouds, you know, I have highlights, low lights. My C, which I'll touch up later on, um, and the base of the land that I will be making. Um, the stairs will start off within this area and continue up into the sky. But for now, I just want to keep it simple. So. We're just going to keep it to the base of what we're doing right here. Touching up gives your painting even more depth. I'm taking the purple that I made before with the mixture of alizarin crimson and the ultramarine and a little bit of the blue, which is the cerulean blue that I used before as well. Always reuse your paint. Always reuse your paint. Painting has never been an exact science. It's always been an indication on how the painter feels.
currently. This is how I'm feeling. Just adding a little bit more depth. <clears throat> Brush and blending. But it was already there. Nice and easy. I left a little turpentine on the brush so that it can actually pull. Now with that, step two is complete. You can already see the indication of my foreground, which is my land my base sea level and my background which is the sky and you can see the different layers that is already have already been produced with what we've already done 